Hey there, I'm Catherine McNamara. I'm an actor and also a member of the global community. And I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. We all have questions about what's going on. So the National Academy of Medicine has introduced me to the lovely Dr. Nicole Lurie to answer some of my questions, which will hopefully answer some of your questions. Nicole, how are you today? Tell us I'm who great. you are and what how are you are and everything. Great, so as you heard, I'm Dr. Nicole Lurie. I'm a scientist, I'm a doctor, I'm a mom, and I spent about eight years as something called the Assistant Secretary for Preparedness and Response, which means that I manage public health emergencies for the federal government. I have some questions for you since you seem to be expert in all of this. As far as symptoms go, what exactly are the symptoms? And if someone is feeling ill or feeling those symptoms, what should they do? So cough, fever, shortness of breath, other people, have no symptoms at all. Some people might have a little upset stomach, diarrhea, muscle aches and pains and headache. But if you have any of those symptoms, stay home. Right now we think about a quarter of people have no symptoms, at least some of the time, and they could still be spreading the virus even when they have no symptoms. So people say, well, why can't I go out and be with my friends? I feel fine. Why can't I go out on the beach? I feel fine. Can I sit around and have drinks with my friends? I feel fine. The answer is no, you could be sick and you could be spreading it. And especially if you're around your parents, your grandparents, somebody else, you could be giving it to them and they're at much greater risk. So any words of advice that you can offer on how to help reduce the spread? A lot of people are suggesting that you cover your nose and mouth while you go out. I think the science about that is still not completely settled, but it might be something that you choose to do. Just not to protect yourself so much, but if you cough or sneeze or droplets come out of your mouth, maybe they won't go as far and spread on surfaces and spread to other people. I've been speaking to my family a lot about herd immunity and things like this that we're not necessarily going to be getting because we all have to social distance. So how do we avoid a second wave once we all are able to leave our homes? It's a great question. And for people who are listening to this, herd immunity means that lots, enough other people around you have immunity that this won't spread as quickly, okay? And so what we hope is that we can suppress this virus and its transmission enough during this wave and have enough testing out there before the next wave that if people start to get sick, if they start to have fevers, if they end up in the hospital, we can test them right away and immediately we can find all their contacts and ask everybody to social distance or isolate to prevent further spread. For right now, that's the only way we're going to get ahead of this. So what can we be doing right now to help healthcare professionals and first responders? We all need to do everything we can do to be sure that they have the equipment they need, the masks and personal protective equipment that they need to be able to take care of themselves when they're seeing patients. That means for us as the general public, don't go buy masks, don't go use up the supply of medical masks, don't go get yourself tested if you really don't need a test. If you're feeling as though you need medical care and you're feeling sick, make a phone call, get on telehealth, do something else other than have a face-to-face -face encounter. Well, thank you so much. And thank you also for your time and for your very candid discussion of this. I, I really appreciate it. I learned quite a bit and I hope all of you out there did as well. Well, thanks for talking. And I hope we get to talk again and I'll look forward to seeing you on the screen.